You want to be amazed? You ready to be amazed? Let's do it. You like being amazed? You like that? <laughs> you, you like that? You, you know? like that? I, I love this. You want to know who was cruising around on the practice field today with the 49ers? I have no idea. Ricky Pearsall. That's awesome. He's just out there. Yeah. Like, doesn't even appear to have, I mean, maybe he's got some bandages, I would imagine, or something under his T-shirt. Looks completely normal. Wow. Cruising around, hanging out with his teammates while they practice and get ready for Monday night. It is Thursday. He was shot in the chest on Saturday. Yeah, five days ago. Just remarkable. Wow. I mean, wow. Wow. Power of healing and the luck of the draw in this case that it was an entry wound and an exit wound that apparently didn't cause any internal <laughs> internal damage other than i don't know being shot yeah like and i would I've never imagine been shot I, I don't i don't want to assume there's no emotional damage cuz that would oh, for sure freak the bleep out right and let alone like and doc pandia did such a good job on tuesday of describing the internal stress and the energy that's given off when a bullet rips through your body it's not just an entry wound and an exit wound, but it's the, I would imagine, the heat and the energy of the bullet physically passing sure. through tissue and vessels. And even if it doesn't hit arteries and organs, you still have tissue and blood and vessels and all the rest of it. And so there will be a significant amount of internal healing. And Doc Pandy also did say that a gunshot wound, you usually don't stitch it up. So I'd imagine he still has ostensibly, Mark, somewhat of a hole in his body. Yes. If not two. Yeah, no, I don't think that just closes up in five days. No, no. Yeah. so there's that too. But yeah, man, that's great news that, he's, this, that he's cruising around. It, incredible. Is this quote true? I don't want to misquote Kyle Shanahan. I'm seeing this online. I thought maybe we had the sound up there. No, I, we do have some, but did he say that in talking to people at, Grandy, you'll probably know, did he say in talking to people at the ER, usually out of 100 people, only two people survive that? That's an accurate quote. Do you hear that? Two out of 100 survive. Survive. A chest wound. Let alone go to practice five days later. I mean, two out of 100 survive something like that, and dudes cruise around with baseball cap and a T-shirt on in Santa Clara in the heat today. It's incredible. I mean. Wow. I would attribute that to not only a higher power, if you indulge, but also to being young and extremely physically fit. That's got to help the healing process. I, I, I'm sure that, that that the physical fitness absolutely helps. He's strong. Um, yes, I'm a, whatever you want to call your spirituality, like sure. you're just positive thinking, your belief in something, whatever. But um, yeah, there's a little bit of luck in there too. Yeah. There's a lot of luck in there. Good no job. Doubt. Good job, Randy. Well, it's, yeah. Randy if, <laughs> For the radio audience, what we have a banner what, that hangs behind what, Mark Willard, what and emotion, this banner has fallen. <laughs> <laughs> what emotion are you feeling right now as you try to hang that sign, Grandy? <laughs> I feel like Sisyphus rolling the rock, rolling up, the rock the up the hill. Yes, and it's... Uh, can't this, do it. For the people who can't see it on YouTube, he's trying to hang a banner that hangs behind Mark for the YouTube and the Twitch audience, but... What you also probably don't know is that this banner has now fallen 37 times Damn! since its inception. Yet, we as a radio group have not come up with a different way to affix this in a more permanent fashion. I would like, I really appreciate you bringing this up because the definition of insanity yes. is what? Is to repeat yourself. And Grandy using the Sisyphus example, which is too highbrow for even me. Let alone our audience. Yeah, but I don't even know what the hell he it's was a just Greek, trash. It's a Greek yeah. myth where the dude rolls the rock up the hill and it falls back down and he does it again. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. That's the definition of insanity I was Sisyphus. looking for. Sisyphus. Yeah. yeah, your boy yeah. Sisyphus did that with his damn rock. Okay, so um, I believe we've reached the level because we've been here for what? About a year now? That's a solid year, I think. Year? It feels okay. about right. Yeah, so I, I, I would argue we've reached the point of insanity with the idea that this banner... This banner is going to stay here with two push pins. Correct. Is that a push pin push on your uniform? Pins. We're talking about thumbtacks. Not a thumbtack. You know what I mean? It's a push pin. Like, it's the most Oakland A's mother bleeping thing i ever seen in my life that we're running around here in the middle of Market 6 doing big time Warriors, yeah, Home of the time. Warriors, 
Niners about to start. We're going to be there on Monday night. We're doing the darn thing. And what do we have to keep up the signage behind our heads? Push pins. Like nobody's even tried tape. (laughs) Nobody's, we haven't even gotten to like Velcro or something crazy like that. Velcro, I like that. We got push pins. Yeah, push pins. And every day we're like, I bet this time they'll stay. Yeah, one side usually droops. There's some droopage. And it's, anyway, anyway probably enough about banners. That's probably enough. We can move on. Um, banners and push pins. Yeah, glad you're with us. 888-957-9570 is the number. I do want to hear more of the Shanahan quotes coming out. I know we yeah. talked a lot about Ricky Pearsall and just this is the last Shanahan you're going to get until Monday. And I know there was a little bit of, I wouldn't call it McCaffrey news, but it was an eyebrow raise. I'm not forcing you to play it now because I know we have great callers on the line, but just hearing he was going to speak today, I was a little press conference excited. Yep. Everything right now is getting me excited about football. Well, that's good. Like I the, do even see, the silly stuff. Well, you know? I really hope that in as we sit here and hear people's emotions and we hear things like frustrated and anxiety and whatever, like feeling anxious, as we hear all that, I, I hope it's not ruining your excitement, is it? You're all excited, oh, right? Yeah. You have to be excited. Push pins. <laughs> I'm not coming back in. And For those of you not you on shouldn't. the YouTube feed, the banner has fallen. The banner has fallen. Tear down that banner. The banner Orby. is on the field. <laughs> the banner is on the field. <laughs> I'm trying to hold it together. I just. I'm I'll, trying to talk about my NFL excitement, and right behind you. Whew, just the saddest well, little double drop, too. Anyway. Don't worry. We still have fat heads of me, Steiny, and Goo behind my head. So you can look at those. And then there's fat heads of you and Bonte and Joe behind your head. And a, a 95-7 the game branding that is not put together by push pins. It's not. It's actually with uh, two-way sticky tape. But you had me thinking, and this is a quick aside, and just give me one minute on this. It might be a fun social media-like bit to do. Your team of fatheads versus my team of fatheads. Like, who would you rather tailgate with? Who would you rather go to a Warrior game with? <laughs> who would you rather eat nachos with? We should have done that, Willard actually. Willard, and Goo versus me, Bonte, and Joe. We, no, we should have done that at the summit yesterday. Have all yeah. of us holding our own fatheads fat heads, yeah. and, like, hold it up. Like, who's, uh, I don't know, who's seen the Niners win a Super Bowl before? <laughs> Hold up your head, like there whatever. Yeah, okay. everybody's old enough for that. But all right, yeah, let's uh, we'll play some Kyle. Uh, we're gonna have some fun with all of the primetime NFL games musical interludes coming up here in a little bit less than hour, uh, an hour or so. But let's keep going with you. What emotion are you feeling? Thirty years since the Niners have won a Super Bowl, and that has you feeling what? As we get this one started, Dollar Bill, San Francisco. What's going on? Thank you for calling. Happy first day of football season, boys. Let's go. Let's go. I am super, super excited. And I feel like I got two points. One, I feel like I I haven't called since the end of last year, but the end of last season. But I feel like I have to call to talk the most privileged fan base off the ledge. Guys. This is the opening day of football. It's the greatest day of the year. We all have, for a Jets fan, the worst four-letter word, hope. Enjoy the game. You know, we have, you could be a Jets fan. You could be a Browns fan. You guys are 40 Niners fans. Enjoy it. Embrace it. And Willard, one last thing. On you being down in L.A., teaching your kids to be a Giants fan, good on you. That is good parenting. My daughters, I've been here for 28 years now. My daughters, the first word they ever learned how to spell was J-E-T-S. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean. Joe the season, boys. Me too, you too, Dollar, Dollar Bill. Bill. Yeah. Maybe it's selfish, but I, I look at sports especially when, you know, everybody in the family loves it. I look at it as something that we're all going to do together. And if I had raised those people to be Dodgers and Lakers fans, we ain't doing nothing together. That's a good point. We're not doing this together. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? It'd be a lot so, harder. Yeah. Yeah, when the for Dodgers sure. are cuffing your Giants around, and your kids are running around the living room <laughs> high five. And really, can you imagine the playoffs in twenty twenty one? Oh my God! Cody Bellinger hits one into right center field, and my kids are like, "Hey!" They're like, "Get <laughs> hugging each the other, hell out <laughs> of my house." That would be wild. Sheesh. Dollar but Bill's right though about he is, and I'm still looking at this list of uh, playoff teams and playoff wins since ninety four and. The list cuts off at five. They want you to pay for the bottom seven. So I've been kind of going through in my mind, like, which teams aren't listed. He just mentioned the Browns. They have five or fewer playoff wins since then. The Raiders. The Raiders are another team. And uh, as I'm going through in my mind, the, the Bears are a team that doesn't even have five playoff wins since 1994. Not so surprising. As we talk about sports privilege, you do have to, you know, keep that in mind well, about teams like that who haven't even sniffed a run. For sure. And, and and I don't think anybody's saying that they would trade places or that they don't have gratitude for being a 49er fan. What I think this is really from, the anxiety, the frustration, whatever you're all feeling, um, and hell, me too, I think it's not um, about any sort of hatred or disdain toward the 49ers. I think it's fear. The fear is that you're going to get through this period of good without one. So it's not about would you trade it for 10 years of bad or do you think that Kyle Shanahan stinks or Brock Purdy's not a good quarterback. I don't think it's really any of that. I think it's a fear of, dude, we had a great team and never got one. And that's why people, I think, say that the window's closing because the window's not closing. The front office has shown that they know how to build a team and you got a young quarterback yeah. you like. The fear, I think, is that the window's it, closing. It, well, that's the fear part. The fear is that players you love are going to get out this league without one. The fear is that George Kittle never going to get one. Yes, but also the fear is that because they won't get one, then the window will close. It's kind of both things, yeah, I think, you know. But I mean, the window, like to me, I have faith in John and Kyle and Parag and everybody that the window will just sort of like stay open because you're going to make good decisions and spend and do good things. But I think there's the the fear is that maybe you, you won't find the right players to replace these guys. And so you have to make good when you have a team that's good enough to do it. You know, and, 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 and that's where I'll agree with people where just one kind of does cement a legacy sometimes. And it relieves the pressure. Yes. Because if, even if you're Grandy's age and Mark Grandy, our technical director, who's 28, so you go back to the Harbaugh run, that was Pete Grandy, 15, 16, 17 years old. Harbaugh goes 36 and 11 in the regular year. You make two Connies and you make a Super Bowl and you don't win any of the three. Yep. And then poof. It goes away. So it feels like already with Shanahan, you've had a longer crack at it than Harbaugh did, longer than Mariucci certainly, and yet you still haven't broken through. But don't forget, though, when you have the best team, even if you get one, there will still be fans that go, only one? Like Bobby Cox's Braves right? with all those pitchers. You only got one? And in fact, sometimes it doesn't even stop there. This is super crazy, but I know tons of Laker fans who are like, I can't believe Shaq and Kobe only got three. And then they got mad at each other and ruined yeah. what could have been at least two or three more. And they're still mad about it. So, so some of it's just your perspective. And human nature. Yeah. And also, if you want to talk about the most privileged fan bases in America, the Lakers and Yankees would be one and two. Oh, of course. Absolutely. As far as privilege, Absolutely. the Cowboys have this false sense of privilege. They're when, the most myopic. Exactly. Yes. But even the Patriots. And I wonder... Checking in on Patriot Sports Talk this year, now that they've had a season of reality and now another season where it looks like they're probably not going to be great again, fourth in the division seems very likely. I wonder how quickly they start to turn. I don't know. Because I'm looking, Mark, and since 94, they're 33 and 16 in the postseason with six rings in that same 30 years we talked about. Yep. The Niners are 20 and 13 with zero rings. I mean, 13 fewer rings, th 13 fewer wins, but six fewer rings. Six fewer rings. Yeah. That's the, I mean, that's well, the that's part how, that stings. That's how close they've been. And the Boston yeah, yeah. fan is just sobering up from the Celtics championship anyway. Good call. Just starting to sober up. Um, let's see. Jay in Castro Valley. Hey, Jay, thank you so much for calling. What's up? Hey, guys. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm an old retired guy, 72 years old. 
Um, I've had a lot of wonderful sports experiences living here in the Bay Area where I've lived my whole life. Um, I guess I'd say I start out every year hopeful. Um, and I'm starting out hopeful this year because I've, um, you know, I'm a Niner fan. I started off a Raider fan. I got my first job when I was in high school to buy Raider season tickets. And I had Raider season tickets through the whole glory years of the 70s with Kenny Stabler. And then they moved to L.A. And um, I had a friend who had a condo up on D Street in Hayward. And his next door neighbor in the condo was Joe Montana. Wow. As a rookie. <laughs> and Montana used to come over to his apartment. My friend had a huge record collection. And we'd be playing records and drinking beer and and um and playing Atari football. And Montana would hang out with us. But what? So, um, I was monster at Atari football, by the way. The old three on three with the one button and the joystick. I was tough to stop. I mean, like, absolutely uh, the same. How could you not be? There was only one button. Like, that's the whole problem generationally with like the Xbox now. And thank you very much, Jay. Yeah, thanks, that's Jay. That's the problem with it. You try to go play a teenager now, dude. There's eight buttons and they can seamlessly control all of them. I, I mean, I, what does L one do again? I don't know. I pre, I I pre farm. I pre select my throw on every play. <laughs> I'm like I'm hitting yeah, it. I need to go yeah, ahead. I, I, I know where the A button is. <laughs> I'm, I'm we're, we're, we're doing the go route. Um, all right, let's go to that guy in San Francisco. Hi, that guy. What are you doing, fellas? Fellas, good afternoon. Uh, you guys get great show, by the way. A couple <laughs> things. I got a, an emotional story. Uh, and I'll make it quick on, on the 30 years uh, of the Niners. But just, hey, Willard, I heard you the other day, brother, on that uh, call to the odd couple. Absolutely oh. phenomenal. That was a great call. Oh, thanks, man. And Dibs, you know, I've been rolling. Dibs, I've been rolling with you since day one back in the Rise Guys and KCVS. And I just wanted to know, uh, and I'll give you my story here. I just wanted to know, Willard, when you pulled the money out of the, the, the Band-Aid box <laughs> and called up pizza. Yeah. Did did Dibley deliver it to you? Because if he did, Dibs, you remember, oh, yeah. you would take a slice and ease it together. <laughs> yeah. It's called the pick and push is what it is. I, I was right. the one who created the pick and push, and thank you for the for the call back. Uh, I actually did the pick and push to David Faustino uh, from Married, you did with, Children. From Married yeah. with Children. He was a victim of the pick and push. How'd that go for you? Did anybody ever chase you down? No chance. I'd have chased you down. You wouldn't have counted the slices. Too. I know exactly how You take an extra large it, pie. No chance. And it's sliced into 12. If you remove the smallest of the 12 and you give it a little push <laughs> around the edges, There's no nobody way. ever counts the slices. You never tried me. I would pick and push you easy. No, first of all, I didn't order extra large. What do you think? I'm crazy? I'm there well, by you myself. you can't pick and push on a small because yeah. it's cut into eight exactly. and the wedges are big. Plus, I used to go to a pizza place. It was right there in Foster City, and it was called Go-Getter's Pizza, mm. and it was thick. It was thick. And 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 it would uh, they, they they would cut the slices really really big, so that it would just be a small six slices. Oh yeah, and they were this kind of a triangle. You had no shot. There's no way if you'd even taken a bite of that thing. Yeah, no chance. I'd have chased you down the and street. And as a veteran pick and pusher, you have to pick your spots. Like with anything, you don't just go into every pizza you deliver. But you got an XL, and you take a look inside the box. <laughs> What's in the box? Not twelve slices. <laughs> Might be 11. Might be 10 if your boy's what, hungry. What kind of tipper was David Faustino? They're pretty good. Okay. That was when I was delivering in the Valley. I was going to say, where do you, where Northridge. Do you live? Northridge. Yeah, yeah, I was in yeah. Northridge. God, this That's when I was Hollywood. working for uh, Pizzasaurus Rex. It's all, That was what it was called? Pizzasaurus Rex. you got to be kidding me. No. You, two mediums for 12 bucks on a Wednesday. <laughs> still, we were busy on Wednesday. still open? I wonder. Come on. Just outside of Northridge. Hang on. I'm going to, uh, I'll Google it. Oh, I think by it's the way. Under different ownership for probably. sure. Probably. Um, you know what's on my Googler right now? I should answer this question because okay. people on the text line asked it like an hour ago. And we oh, never geez. Had, well, no, but they were asking. Remember we were talking about the new kickoff rule? Right. And people were like, hey, uh, it doesn't sound like you could do an onside kick anymore. You can't. Do you know the new rule? Yes, you have to uh, send a formal request to Roger Goodell <laughs> to execute an onside kick. It goes before a board of governors, and then they... I'm being a little sarcastic. I was going to say, this is an exaggeration sensation. You have sensation. to declare, if hey, you declare. we're going to onside kick. 
Can you guys make sure you're ready for it? Hold on. So stupid. Hold on. There's a second very important piece of the rule. You are right. You have to declare. You have to be trailing, and it has to be the fourth quarter. Um... You have to be trailing? You have to be, yep, losing in the fourth quarter, okay. and you have to declare I, that it's going to happen. The fourth quarter was, the, I knew what needed to be the fourth quarter. I didn't know you had to be trailing. You do? Mm. Yep. Wow. Hey, uh, dear nice Canada, job. this is the U.S. We're going to invade in about three weeks. Uh, we just wanted to give you proper notice. Uh, we're going to be lining up at the border here. We're coming to take your country. Yeah. It's well, so, uh, that part really rankles me. Yeah, the no surprise zone. Because that was great. What was it, uh, Sean Payton in the Super Bowl? In the Super Bowl. It came straight out of the locker room? Yep. Yep. Have I got a plan for you? And he won Whoop. that thing, too. He won a ring. Yeah. He won a ring. Yeah. I don't know. It's just the robotic nature of our sport now. Everything's becoming so well, so robotic. I think that, that we, we what we have to remember about this, whether you like it or not, is this is a television show. And onside kicks are boring as all hell. They don't work. Now, I don't know. Surprise if, onside kicks work more than just the, your garden variety. I think that they kind of actually got ready for those, too. If you think about it, when was the last time we got a surprise onside kick that worked? I'd have to go back into the archives, exactly. but we're not going to ever see that again. Yeah, because it wasn't working either, because people were ready for it once it happened on the biggest stage. And then the ones that you are ready for, you know, yeah, you can still try it. I actually like the idea that I think they're moving toward, which is completely doing away with the onside kick. And I think the idea that got thrown out is like you go to your own 20 and, and it, it's fourth and 15. Oh, that's you, your version you, of the onside kick. And you get one play, you get one play. And the penalty is, is if you don't get it, the other team's already got the ball in the red zone. Yeah. And, but if you're trailing, if you're trailing with three minutes to go, why the hell not? That feels to me like the automatic runner at second in the 10th inning. It's just too contrived and too cockamamie for me. Well, it's not real football. Yeah, but contrived and cockamamie becomes like reality real quick. At times. You got an extra inning baseball game and you're like, there goes Bob to second base. Contrived and cockamamie, but and we're stu- doing it. It's But it's stupid. But we're doing it. We're doing it because what we thought, and I, I wonder if they eventually go back because... You know, they did that for time of game in many ways and also to not tax a poor yeah, but pitching the, the, staff. The, the and, players' union loves it because they don't yeah. want to play 18 innings. You guys, right, was they get it paid you, the same. Was it you or FP? Someone had, I think, what is the absolute best solution here. You can I think it was me. Do that. No, <laughs> it was 10th was, was inning, play it normal. Yeah. 11th inning, runner at second. 12th inning, runner at second, oh, third. I was thinking. 13th inning, they're loaded. I was thinking 10th and 11th inning, play it regular. 12th inning, put the runner at second. And do that every inning after that. You don't need to keep slower, you know, slower. Oh, I like the like escalating a, it. Like, By the 17th inning, you're pitching underhand. <laughs> and I get to use a metal bat. <laughs> no, se- Let's get this thing over 17th with. 17th inning, you just get a T. We're, we're done there with we go. no pitchers. That's right. There's a T. Can you hit it over the fence? Just bring bonds up. <laughs> go on. Go on. Yeah. Like, whatever. I, we're never going to see the 17th inning again. But the big tell is, and this is what I don't love, if you've got a sport that suddenly decides that when you get to the playoffs, they got to go back to their old rule, that's a tell. That's a tell that it's a bad rule. Exactly. And that's what baseball does. You're not going to put a runner second in the playoffs. You just got to play it. Yeah, so play baseball. Yeah, that's the way it should be, I, I think.